The Greens are pushing for a rental freeze. Today, we're going to look at why this is being proposed. We're going to look at some of the consequences if this actually goes through and why the Greens are just kicking the can down the road. So let's have a look here. We can see local renters potentially could have their rental frozen for the next two years if the Greens are successful in an unlikely task of pushing through a bill introduced in the Queensland government this week, which effectively means that rents can't increase for the next two years, then after the two years, there can only be a 2% increase. Now, many have felt the pressure, especially in the region of Queensland, where vacancy rates are less than 0.5% and rents are skyrocketing at record rates. And the South Brisbane member, Amy McMannon, she's mentioned that there needs to be an emergency for the next two years where rents need to freeze to give this state government time to really replenish and replace um, and address the housing problem. Uh, rents have increased at historic levels in the last 12 months. And we, if we have a quick look here, we can see rental increases across the country. Brisbane at a record high of 14.1% uh, in the month of August, Adelaide at 12.2%, Sydney 9.8% and the other states there. So rental increases are certainly something that is being felt across the country. And we can see there's a bunch of reasons why this is the case. Um, we can see in Queensland here, vacancy rates are at an all-time low. We can also see approvals for dwellings over the last sort of five years have been below average. So let's have a look at why this is happening. So firstly, it's certainly a, a perfect storm where um, during COVID, there was a bunch of restrictions, as we all know, and uh, investors weren't really that active in the market. We saw far more owner-occupiers, people uh, getting tree change, sea change, and that affordability piece really fell out of the market. Um, the other thing we also have seen in recent times, a lot more of the younger generation are struggling to get in the market. So if we look at people in the same age bracket, in the 25 to 29 year old, we can see only 36% of people born between 1992 to 1996 own a property. If you compare that to two generations prior, where um, people that are born in the 1947s to 1951s, 52% of that cohort participated in owned property. So we can see there's certainly been a massive shift where that affordability piece, and we can see as each generation goes on, that affordability piece is becoming less and less. And the younger generation are the ones that are really feeling the pinch being the higher percentage of renters. Um, on top of that, a, a consequence that could um, we could foresee coming from such a, a really big policy push where you, you're forcing investors to you know, hold off on their returns on investments and even increasing rent in a free market, we might actually see a massive push where people take their properties off the market, further causing bigger issues in the, in the marketplace where rents could continue to increase. And you know, moving to Airbnb, we can see since 2016, housing for Airbnb has skyrocketed from 33000 up to 100,000 or 94,000 listings. We can see the same thing for private rooms where people are just renting out one room. That hasn't increased as significantly from 18,000 all the way up to 32,000, an increase nonetheless. But we could see one of the consequences from these really rash decision makings where people might actually say, well, bugger it, we're going to pull our, our property off the market. We're actually not going to make it an investment property anymore. We're going to make it an Airbnb where we get a better return and we're not going to be as restricted. Certainly, as we can see here in terms of locations where people are listing Airbnbs, mainly on the coasts. And that's where the major problems are happening in all the capital cities across Australia. Uh, and a, a big problem we're also seeing is that we're probably kicking the can down the road. Um, in Australia, we've actually got 20,000 houses that were deficient by each year. So Australia will actually need an additional 20,000 homes a year over the next decade to meet demand and address the country's housing shortage. So by doing this sort of pause for the next two years is actually not really resolving any of the deep-seated issues whereby maybe we need to look at increasing the amount of dwellings that are getting approved. So the um, council approvals and the number of dwellings and maybe relaxing some of those requirements in 
certain council areas where you can have more dwellings and more flexibility for investors to build more properties on on dwellings so that there's not so much of a supply shortage. As we can see here, the Property Council of Australia's new research has found that 163, 400,000 homes are expected to be short of demand uh, between 2025 to 2032. Now, while supply may appear to be healthy in the short term, the research showed that there will be a major supply crunch on the horizon. Well, if this is around the corner and we've already seen what has happened with um, property values increasing since COVID, massive increases, and that was really based on a, a massive demand hike. If we're going to see huge supply shortages, are we going to see further increasing values where it's going to be furtherly unsustainable, where we're going to have more young people uh, really priced out of the market, as we can see here, your participation rates might continue to go down. The Housing Research of Australia suggests that we do have a housing shortage and um, the demand for new housing is actually going to outstrip the supply as the economy and net migration is set to recover. So there's a bunch of issues here. I think the Greens are tackling a very short-term problem. They're kicking the can down the road where it might actually need to be something that we look at in further detail, looking at approvals, looking at what the consequences are if you tell investors they can't increase their rent. Are they going to move to making their properties more viable, more profitable by moving to Airbnb? Or are they going to sell completely and then those properties get picked up by more owner occupiers and then you still got an issue because it's more that affordability piece where the younger generation in the 35s brackets and under are, are struggling with 60% of them renting and furthering reducing the amount of people participating. I think this is a huge issue. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. What do you think of the issues? What are the what are the things that we can do to fix this? And are the Greens just really kicking the can down the road?